What's going on everybody? I'm Brian and welcome to the WBRG BTV, Brian's technical videos where we work on customer bikes, show you step by step what needs to be done. If you're wanting to get your bike worked on here at BTV, top link below, let's get to work. Hello again everyone and welcome back to the WBRG shop. Today we have a 2020 Ducati Panigale V2 and uh, we're going to be putting some Spider rear set GP setup rear sets on our, uh, on our Ducati today. It already has a really nice amount of uh, bits and touches already installed on it. So uh, hopefully we're just adding to the beautification of this fantastic machine. So. We're going to get to work, we're going to get these uh, all set up, mocked up, and then we're going to break them down, Loctite everything, and then reinstall them permanently the second time. So we're going to get started on this and uh, let's get to work everybody. Welcome to the shop, everyone. This is our 2020 Ducati Panigale V2. And uh, we got these super nice spider rear sets to put on. Everything is, uh, looks like it's all machined out of a billet. They do have a little bit of weight to them, but uh, I guess that's kind of okay. This setup does not have a place for the brake light switch to mount to it. So we're going to be installing a uh, brake pressure switch, which is here. I'll be installing a brake pressure switch instead of the, uh, the spring-loaded switch that's on this one while we're doing that. So we're going to need to drain the rear brake fluid out of it, pull the banjo bolt out, clean all the brake fluid up, install the, um, install the pressure switch, and then refill and bleed the system when we're done. So first things first well you know and I think I might actually start on the shifter side now these uh, rear sets they came in the box assembled but nothing is tight everything is just finger uh, assembled so we're gonna have to go through and uh, tighten everything down and lock tight everything once we get everything set up where we want it so the, uh, the hardware comes in from the back of these rear sets, so this one down here on the bottom obviously is behind the bodywork, so that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with removing some of this bodywork off of here. There we go. And that one's a four, and then I believe there are two more down here. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five. Inside here, there's one that there's a tab on the inside of the body where it comes up, and that bolts to that six. One in the middle, seven, and one on the side is eight to get this lower piece of body work off. There we go. Nice little, little guy right there. And there's our lower panel. Now we have uh, access to our rear set. I'm going to start by removing the quick shifter here. A couple zip ties to cut. There will be some hardware to remove. So this is the quick shifter wire here. And we're just going to put that, come on, we're going to leave that off of there. And here is the connector for our quick shifter. These connectors are pretty delicate. So we need to push this tab down and pull on the wire at the same time. It is a little fiddly. Okay. 
Now we want to remove the shift rod out of here. Now I don't think I could actually get to that piece of hardware, but I'm actually going to give it a shot real quick here. I don't particularly like breaking stuff free with a ball and allen, but if I don't have to take off a bunch of other stuff, I'm willing to try it. Nope, don't think it's going to do it. So we got to take some stuff apart here. Just to make sure nothing starts to come apart there, we're going to grab a couple zip ties. So with your hydraulic clutch system, with no nothing to hold it back here, sometimes this piston starts to extend. And if you're not paying attention, it could slide out all the way and then you would dump all of your clutch fluid everywhere. So just to make sure, so I don't have to worry about it. I'm just going to wrap a zip tie over where the piston would be coming out of. Oh, now we have a better shot to the shifter and a better tool to go in and break this bolt free. There we go. Feels like there's a bit of Loctite on that. Super shallow headed five millimeter Allen. Now are these plastic spacers in here that's to keep all of the debris out of the heim joint here. Now the shifter is totally out of the way. We should just have enough access to that. There we go. Both of these are loose now. Okay. Here's our factory rear set. Here is our aftermarket rear set. Okay, so this rear set gets, stay, gets this spacer and long bolt. Okay, so we're going to refit this back up. We're going to start with the short one. All right, so everything is still pretty loose in here. I'm just taking a look at where we're at as far as where the shifter is gonna live. It's pretty close to where it was before. Maybe it's a little bit lower. Well, that's adjustments that the owner will make when he is, uh, when he is ready to set things up perfectly for him. Those look like they're going to fit really, really nicely once uh, all completed and together. And we're going to move on to the brake side. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult, I believe. <clears throat> Only because we have to deal with brake fluid and such. 
don't know if you guys can tell, but he's already got, you know, anodized rear nut. Um, looks like a full exhaust system. Uh, he's got the dry clutch set up. And uh, he's got some, uh, some carbon levers, some domino grips, some other little bits and pieces of uh, anodized Duke bike stuff on here. Flush mount blinkers. No mirrors on the thing. A little sketchy for me, but nice uh, fender eliminator. It's got some nice parts on this thing. We're just adding to the collection here. So pretty much where we started on the last one, we need to remove this panel so we can get to everything that we need to get to. Now there aren't quite as many pieces of hardware on this side because it's a shorter panel because of the, the clutch cover here. The other side doesn't have that in the way. One more in the bottom here. There it is. Yes, yes, there's one more. I almost forgot. Now, out to release the bottom and then down. You want to be careful here not to scratch the fairing on the brake pedal. Now we need to dismount the brake, rear brake master cylinder from the rear set. Well, it should be easier to do, hopefully, once we do this. Okay. So that is now out of the way. Man, they sure are making it difficult to get this thing off of here. Now we're not currently going to worry about this because we're just fitting everything. And this is one really nice thing about these aftermarket rear sets. You can take this bracket and mount it on and not have to worry about getting to anything later. These two are for the heel guard. These two are for mounting. And these two are for the brake master. Get this brake line switch out of the way for a moment. All right, well, I got them both on here. Everything seems to clear everywhere. 
very obvious everything still needs to be tightened, but that's a really good fit. I have no concerns about the quick shifter because instead of changing the pivot on the shift rod itself, it changes it in between the shift lever and the rods, which is pretty cool. So um, pretty cool setup. I probably am still going to have to, can I get your opinion? Bring this uh, shifter up. It looks like it sits pretty low. It sits very low. There's not any more adjustment left in this arm. Now I can bring this down if I need to. Yeah. So that's good. <clears throat> Okay, I think they're all pretty much set up. Looks pretty good. So now I get to uh, take everything off and do final assembly. All right, so we got everything attached the way that it needs to be. So now I get to disassemble and um, take everything apart, Loctite everything, and put everything back on again. Okay. Now... This is a lock nut, and I just want to make sure that all this stuff is tight. All right, so we have, we're making a mess over here. So we have disassembled everything, reassembled and put Loctite and torqued everything down on this side. We uh, rerouted and zip tied all of our wires back into place. We have our lower fairing back in with its one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we didn't do the center one in the middle because it goes to the other side as well. So moving over to the other side, we have everything mounted, Loctited, torqued down. Now we're working on our brake switch. So here's our switch. There was a, a bit more wire on it. We really don't need that much wire being that this is where we're going to make our connection. So this was the other half of the brake light switch, which does not have a spot in these rear sets. So we are working our presser switch into the equation. So I need to remove this banjo bolt and replace it with the pressure switch. And then we can attach the wires and refill the system. But for now, we're just going to drain the rear brake system. Alright, so I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I can hear the rear brake master sonar reservoir is sucked dry, so I'm just going to hit and lock that off. We'll leave that there for now. Pressure switch, new crush washers, tightened down. Now we get to make our wire connections here. I got some shrink tubing out. I need to put this bolt back in and then I can refill the system and then bleed it. So we're just going to go ahead and put you back where you belong. Can I get a bleeder buddy? What? A bleeder buddy? I need you to pump the rear brake pedal. All right, go ahead and pump it about 10 times and hold it. Holding. 
still waiting for a big burp of air to come out. I got pressure. You ready? I figured out where the bubbles were. They were in the caliper. All right. I think I'm pretty much done with this thing, minus a couple of pieces of bodywork that I'm gonna throw on now. So just to go back over where we're at, I had a bit of trouble getting the air back out of the rear brake system. I did finally uh, get it out by removing the rear brake caliper, turning it upside down and then spreading all the brake pads open to push any air that was in there out. I think that was where it was trapped for me. And then from there, I went back through and redid my bleeding procedure and I got a nice firm pedal now. I got just a little bit of free play, which is what I want. Everything is looking really nice. Everything's tight. Everything's Loctited. Um, pretty much at this point, I just need to very quickly button it up. I'm going to wash my hands before I touch the bodywork. I am going to start with this one here. And we are now complete. Okay, here are our Spider GP style rear sets for our 2020 Ducati Panigale V2. And uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, what you got to see here today. This is a, a pretty fine machine and these are some pretty nice parts. So I am going to clean my mess and get up out of here for today. So I hope you all enjoyed it. If, uh, if you like this type of content, please subscribe, like, and watch. And we'll be back with some more later. Have a good day. All right, so this is the conclusion to our 2020 Ducati Panigale V2 rear set. And uh, I hope I didn't forget to mention that this is now a GP shift set up on this bike. Um, I did speak with the customer earlier today, and we're going to keep the foot pegs themselves in a very neutral position. He was comfortable with it on the street that way. If he needs to change things up when he goes to the track with it, he's capable of doing that later. So I am finished with my process here. Um, we have our spider rear sets on, our carbon fiber heel guards, bolt sides, our pressure switch installed for the brake light on the other side of the bike. Thank you for watching our show. We hope you uh, enjoy our content here. If you do, please subscribe and like down below and we'll see you on the next video. Dun 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 dun!